The following video is to explain how elliptical filtering works inside XSI. What we have here is uh, these grid line are basically the actual pixel being rendered. I've, uh, uh, I needed to increase the actual size of the pixel to accentuate a little bit what's happening inside the render. So let's see this as being a portion of the image. The, uh, these squares here represent the actual pixel being rendered. And this is the actual geometry here being rendered or seen as the camera. This uh, square element is the, the actual pixel we'll be using to render. So for example, if uh, we were to render with the uh, NCLizing 0, 0 means only one sample per pixel, we would be taking a sample at the corner of the pixel right here, which turns out to give a some, some sort of uh, dark color right here. But let's say, for example, the object here has been, uh, let's say, for example, has been uh, put in place um, in a given fashion. So as soon as the camera moves slightly, this will actually start to create some kind of offset like this. So as you can see here, because the camera has slightly moved, for example, the actual lookup lo lo location at the surface of the object here will be totally different. It will actually uh, move. So if you are doing these 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 pixel rendering, especially when uh, the actual uh, pixel are really far away at the horizon, for example, you'll see that these pixel will will fluctuate very rapidly because the actual lookup location will be drastically different and shifting because a small changes uh, at some place may induce a very large translation back there at the horizon. So I'll put it back to zero here and um, we'll, uh, we'll show what the elliptical filtering is uh, going to do. Elliptical filtering, instead of doing a point sample or a bilinear sample, is going to look up in an area an area contained uh, that basically represent the pixel to be rendered. So I've uh, set up here a geometry that basically binds to the actual pixel size which is a circle and that circle has been projected onto the surface and that basically creates an actual ellipse that is uh, can be represented in 3D space well actually in this case in, in the actual UV space this pixel will, this ellipse will contain a given number, on uh, a specific numbers of of pixels inside the ellipse, and elliptical filtering will will use all these these pixels and approximate it in order to return a, a one unique uh, color result for the pixel. So if we go back here and uh, we uh, look at this here, this pixel sounds look at as, as if it was uh, round but actually it becomes more like an ellipse when, once it's being rendered. Under the image uh, filtering tab of the image uh, shader node there's a uh, series of parameters that are being used to control how this ellipse behaves. The maximum ex eccentricity is, is designed to control the, the actual uh, the maximum uh, proportion, the maximum proportion of the actual ellipse. Uh, so for example if uh, you've set a value of 20 it means that the actual ellipse can be 20 times larger than it is higher or height versus width. So in this case if I, I start to actually scale down I could pretty much say okay this is pretty much the actual maximum shape factor the actual ellipse can have when it's sets to 20 because the, the height here can be 20 while the width here can be 1. So it's a proportion between either width and height. So I'll, I'll, I'll uh, undo this, uh, this changes. So maximum ex eccentricity is really to avoid having these very thin ellipses that uh, gets rendered especially at horizon when rendering a texture that, that moves uh, towards the horizon then you have these the very very fine ellipses that could actually start to create artifacts so this is to control the actual uh, proportion factor maximum proportion factor the ellipse will will be uh, will be having um, also the maximum pixel uh, uh, maximum pixel for minimum radius this is is actually used to guide 
the elliptical filtering engine or algorithm to pick up the right resolution for the ellipse. So let's say for example the minimum radius is basically the smallest radius either in width or height and this particular space, let's say for example this is the actual width here, is only allowed to have uh, a maximum of a 16 pixel. If we take this actual ellipse here and uh, go here under the uh, the actual uh, memory map uh, pyramidal format, mental ray lay uh, layouts the actual texture uh, in memory using pyramidal in such a way, where the actual RGB, for example, at 1K or let's say 2K or 3K are being laid out like this, which leaves an open spot here to do the lower resolution. So you have 512 here, 256, then 128, 64, 32, so on and so forth until it becomes a pixel, one, one pixel size. So this, um, this maximum pixel for minimum radius will basically instruct how the ellipse, what is the actual level the ellipse should be using uh, to do the lookup. Obviously if uh, the actual ellipse contains let's say a 2000 pixel then it means that there's a lot of work because he has to look up all these uh, pixels and, and that takes times and uh, uh, we want to limit this uh, this as much as possible. So by looking up at a smaller resolution then we speed up the lookup process. So by uh, setting up the maximum pixel for minimum, minimum radius to 16 then the ellipse once expressed in these, these uh, image space here will pick up the right resolution to match this criterion in order to have the perfect match. So it's really a balance between quality and uh, and speed. So obviously the lower this, uh, if you lower this, and obviously we'll start to look up into the smallest resolution and obviously you'll get a very blurry result. If you increase this, val this value, you tend to, you, you, you force the ellipse lookup to go higher in the resolution here, which will produce uh, better quality, but obviously will require more time to average and sum up uh, than if it was in lower resolution. And the actual disk radius is defining the actual uh, size the actual ellipse can have inside the actual um, image plane. Bilinear interpolation is simple. Is, is simply whenever it's uh, doing the sum up here it will use a bilinear. So there's no reason to turn this one off uh, unless you really need it. So that's pretty much how elliptical filtering works and um, and and something you have to remember is that elliptic, elliptical filtering is designed uh, to uh, to do automatic texture LOD and and will automatically take care of, of LOD blending as the actual object moves back and forth uh, in in reference to the image plane and and this is this is a feature that you have for free simply by providing the image into a memory map pyramidal format and by enabling this feature. So it's a uh, it's really a, a, a good advance feature to use in order to lower the flickering um, and and stabilize the actual quality in uh, in your final renders. Thank you.